Well, here we are. It's Friday, <laughs> and we're here for the regular weekly video. I hope everybody had a good week. Uh, we finally got some good weather around here. It's about 75 degrees here today and beautiful out, and uh, the, hopefully this is the end of uh, a cold spring. Um, what's been going on? Uh, a lot, actually. Uh, let's, first thing, uh, on the global pages, we've updated the, uh, the uh, uh, video section for there with the, uh, the global, page, uh, global member page video for the week. Just did it this morning. I held off on doing it for a few days this week because there was so many sales going on. The, the Rob Michael sale was going on. Uh, the Masan sale took place and a bunch of other things that I wanted to see how they did because they thought it would make it more interesting. So we went over all the, all the material. Rob Michael's sale did very well. The Masan sale was very soft. Um, uh, so if you participated in the Masan sale, I suspect you got some pretty good buys. Uh, and we went over it in the video. Uh, what else is going on here? Oh, um, uh, on the uh, global pages, we've added the, uh, there's a couple of sales that have some good rugs in it. Um, uh, uh, but the, the, the biggest one is the uh, material culture. Uh, here it is. And uh, they've got a, a whole lot of, of really good Chinese rugs on here. Chinese carpets, dragon carpets, um, uh, Ningxai carpets. Uh, uh, pictorial rugs, uh, you name it. And these are all pretty big. There's a bunch of uh, fairly half a dozen or dozen large rugs, large textiles. Uh, you have this uh, carpet, for example, that's uh, 11 by 13 and so forth. So uh, do check those out. Some good Art Deco examples. Some, there's a FET rug here uh, from the FET factory. They didn't identify it as that, but that's what it is. Uh, and uh, the usual, you know, some good Persian examples, and then lots of uh, Ersari and Yomut pieces in here from Central Asia. So uh, if you're a rug guy or a rug gal uh, or textile collector, uh, you want to you want to take a look at that. Uh, they did they did they did get some good items, and uh, I think the sales will do pretty well. But if you're looking for a room size rug, a room size Chinese rug for your house. Um, uh, to, to, to you know, to, is a it's sort of a frame for uh, your collection. Uh, this this might be a sale worth checking out. Uh, some really good ones. There's this wonderful looking Art Deco rug, and so forth. All right, now, uh, oh yeah, we added we have added back in valuable. We had invaluable on here for a while, and then what happened was they were blocking us. They they wouldn't allow us to share their information. I don't know why. I think it's just something they do across the across their services. Uh, to prevent people from um, uh, scrimming their, their information. I don't know what the reason is, but we contacted them a bunch of times trying to reach out to them saying, look, we're doing this to, to, to share your auctions with people. We're not, you know, we're, there's nothing funny going on. Um, we couldn't get anybody on the phone that knew anything. Um, so if you know anybody in, 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 um, invaluable, uh, we'd like to talk to them because uh, we'd like to be able to uh, set up the pages exactly as we have them set up for live auctioneers. But um, we found a workaround to link them and sh present some images from the sale. And uh, if you if you click on them, it'll bring you into the auction. And uh, we tend to we're going to try and just pick the auctioneers that uh, do a good job uh, with identifying and you know every other item isn't a repro, so you don't have to worry too much. But uh, there, there's stuff like this on here. This is Vendu Rotter Rotterdam had uh, just a small number of Chinese pieces, but some rather good ones. And then there's some other auctions on here that have a lot more. Uh, uh, and uh, oh, also there's a, a very good uh, the Alvera Alvera collection um, uh, is being sold at uh, Sotheby's. Uh, if you're interested in that, some really good English furniture and Irish furniture and all that, but also some very choice uh, uh, Chinese porcelain examples. And uh, there's uh, the Vellingwies de Jaeger, Zuis Vellingwies has this uh, nice looking um, uh, Famille Rose set, and there's a bunch of other things. So uh, if you're on the pages, uh, check those out this weekend. We'll be adding more to them. We're going to update the uh, uh, global member pages tomorrow morning, uh, fairly early. As soon as, as soon as I get up, I'll do it uh, because I, I want to leave the Rob Michaels results up there. And um, we have a queue on uh, right now. There's a queue of about uh, there's about probably 500 things we're going to add between the two pages tomorrow. So uh, be, be sure to check that out. Some good looking things here in the U.S. as well as um, overseas. And as I mentioned last week, we have divided the uh, menu 
on, on invaluable, I mean, on live auctioneers between inside the U.S. and outside the U.S. Because a lot of you buy in the, buy in, in the EU and you're not interested in stuff from America because of shipping and added expenses. And, and the same for people that shop within the U.S. Uh, it's, it's a, as you all know, it's a lot less expensive to ship, uh, you know, from New Jersey to Pennsylvania than it is to ship from you know, uh, uh, you know, the Netherlands to uh, 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 the same, you know, some destination in the U.S. It just gets very expensive. So um, we've split them up, and uh, there, they, there, there they are. All right, now, um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah, the um, uh, eBay last week. Uh, they had some pretty good results, and there's some good things coming up. Um, so stick around for the end of the video. Uh, but there's some pretty good lots coming up, and we had some pretty good results on eBay, though I mentioned last week there seems to be a, a, a bit of a decline in content on there, and I don't know why, other than maybe people are sick of eBay and all their, their you know, if you sell on eBay, they don't make it easy. And um, um, I don't know why, but um, they're always throwing up obstacles and increasing fees, and I understand there's a new fee increase coming, by the way. Um, uh, there's a couple of fee increases coming, and uh, they're, t they're desperately trying to tweak their earnings uh, because they're 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 in a bit of a jam right now uh, because they haven't the site hasn't grown is what the problem is uh, uh, they they were forced to recalculate the way they they uh, project their sales and uh, it resulted in a twenty percent uh, decline in uh, uh, revenue and basically eBay right now is roughly the same size it was six years ago as far as number of users and daily uh, uh, daily interactions. It hasn't hasn't seen any significant growth now in six years as opposed to Amazon and other sites which have seen enormous growth. Uh, so I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, 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 just just keep keep that in mind. I don't know if you know. I don't know what. I don't think eBay is going anywhere anytime soon, but. Um, I'm, I'm wondering how much deterioration they're going to be able to withstand uh, because of the way the company's run. But that's a whole other thing, so don't get me started. All right, now uh, let's see what happened. Um, we had this, this nice-looking Kangxi uh, 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 iron red and uh, gilt decorated plate. This is a nice one. Lotus, uh, lotus, uh, bar, uh, lotus petal rims around it. Um, nice-looking scene of uh, two figures, uh, a woman with a whisk. And uh, she's got her her guy there, and they're standing over a scholar's table. Uh, nice looking plate. Nice looking plate. Did well. There, there, these plates always do well. This this style of plate always do well. And uh, it brought five hundred and sixty five dollars. And this wasn't a large plate. This was uh, only uh, barely eight inches, barely little over eight inches in diameter, but desirable pattern. And then this. I thought this was awfully pretty. Uh, uh, a, a really, really nice-looking example, probably Yong Chen period. But I loved the uh, rope twist device, uh, how they framed framed the plate itself. Uh, I thought it was just absolutely great, and very delicately nice little flowers that were added up along the rim. And then you have this this rust background or reddish reddish rust done with waves, cloud patterns, and highlighted in gold. Uh, this was a really dandy little plate. It wasn't big. This is not a big plate. It's about, uh, uh, what the hell was it, uh, six, excuse my French, uh, I think six inches in diameter or something, um, eight inches in diameter, a little over eight inches in diameter, but wonderfully decorated, and it sold for $324, which I think is a good, a good value, I think it's a really good value. You'll notice that there's no wear to this at all. You always, you always, always want to check the, the quality of the enamels, which here are excellent, you have a nice, nice nice crisp red color. Um, you have that very nice yellow that, that was so popular in the period. And then you have that subtle um, uh, underglazed blue that uh, sort of does a, the perfect job of framing this kind of a plate. But you'll notice that uh, there's no wear, no chips. Uh, it was in very, very good condition and uh, no firing flaws. So uh, you're going to get a good price for a thing like that. and. Uh, um, I don't think 324 was at all unreasonable. That was a really fine example. And your quality, 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 of course. All right, now on to this. Uh, early, early 19th century, probably Jai Jing period, 
um, export uh, 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 plate and uh, well, or cup and saucer rather, and um, armorial obviously. Uh, nice looking piece. Look at this. I don't. I don't know why. Sixty nine dollars. This was like one of the bargains of the week. Um, uh, uh, inexpensive shipping um, uh, from uh, Arizona to here it was only sixteen dollars. This is a really nice uh, export example. Very very nice. Very fine detail. Very fine enameling. I don't think it's eighteenth century. They had it listed as eighteenth century. I think it's probably early nineteenth century, but it, it doesn't matter. It's a it's a quibble. Uh, but boy, what a beautiful looking piece of porcelain, uh, both of them, uh, and for, for nothing, for nothing. Um, so, like I said all the time, leave a bid. Uh, and then on to this, this was that, that the sort of interesting lot they put together. It's got this uh, later uh, uh, boy kneeling pillow, and then these uh, rather nice looking, uh, probably uh, late 19th century Tung Chi style uh, uh, oh, you know, uh, lobe-shaped bowls, oblong bowls, but then you had this vase which looked pretty good. It looked like it's about probably 15 or 16 inches tall, and then you have this late, 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 late uh, Qing um, or Republic period rather plate, um, the whole lot. And uh, look at this. Uh, somebody got a good buy. Um, $685. That's about what the vase is worth. So you basically got the vase and then you got the other stuff for free if you bought this lot. Uh, the vase, yeah, the vase is 17 inches tall. It's an 18 inch, basically an 18 inch vase, 17 and a half inches. Um, uh, so that vase alone is worth, uh, it's worth at least what was paid for the lot and then some. So if you bought it, you got a good buy. You got a really good buy. Um, I, I don't know why he did it this way. The, the BK Treasures sold this. Um, I, I don't know why. I really don't because could have easily sold these all separated and, and I think probably done a lot better. But if you bought it, you did good. <laughs> all right, and then on to this. This was a, a, a well-known um, uh, Wan Lee type of uh, uh, blue and white. And uh, the reason I talk about it is the quality of it. This is a really fine example. And uh, if you flip it over, you'll notice that it's not cr crusted up with a lot of kiln grit. It's got a nice uh, uh, white foot on it. Um, Beautifully, beautifully uh, decorated around the back, uh, but you'll notice the only the only thing going on. You get some um, some glaze bursts or bubbles that came up through the glaze, but uh, other than that, this thing is perfect, and uh, and that's that's all that's all a quibble because the the decoration on this uh, is excellent. It's just excellent, and this is actually a charger. It's about 13 inches, 13 and a half inches wide, so it was a big plate. Perfect decoration, beautiful shading of cobalt. Um, you know, it didn't turn gray anywhere. It's nice, rich color, even color. And uh, uh, somebody got a, a, got a, I think got a very good buy, $531. All right, and this was a charger and it wasn't chipped or damaged. Because as you know, chip, chip, chipped one lead pieces, you know, it, you could take off 80, 90% of the value. Here you have one that's perfect. And uh, I think it did, it did, it did okay, but I think the buyer won on this one. All right, and then on to this, this little uh, early 18th century covered jar. Um, I couldn't see anything wrong with it. It looked like it had a firing flaw here in the rim, that may have, the, the rim of the lid, the edge of the lid may have held it down. It only went for $112, uh, which, which looks like a pretty good buy uh, if you're in, into, into uh, uh, eight, early 18th century wares. Um, you know, off, half the time they, these things turn up without the lid and they still sell for about $100. This one was complete, had the lid on it, but um, um, not sure why. Very good price. And the Japanese dish, uh, uh, Meiji period probably, possibly late Edo, but uh, nicely done with these uh, characters running around it. <clears throat> good looking um, uh, uh, inner border and outer border decoration, these wave patterns, classic type. And um, they, they, this is a type that they made a lot earlier too. They made it uh, in, in the late 17th century and it, it had sort of a revival toward the Meiji period. Um, somebody bought this for $26, all right? Um, don't know how that happened, uh, but uh, uh, that was a bargain. That was an absolute bargain. And I know some of you looked at it you know, if you like Japanese things, just leave a bid. I mean, you know, $26, nothing, nothing for that. The shipping was more. 
All right, and on to this, the early 17th century reticulated uh, bowl, uh, nice looking bowl. Um, this 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 uh, you know re relief uh, uh, this cage work around it it's all re uh, all open worked and then these beautiful little roundels with little scenes in them and then these rue head lappets around the base and then these lausanne shaped devices uh, which you often see on these this is a, a popular pattern um, uh, beautifully done and uh, it, it, it it's interesting it, 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 a label on it from antique west vest antique vest. Um, which was a, a company, I don't know if they're even around anymore, um, but uh, they, they were pretty active back about 20 years or 15 years ago. Uh, maybe they are, I shouldn't say anything, but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, now on to this. They had this listed, I think, as Kangxi or something. Um, Kangxi uh, Amari's uh, serving platter. I don't think it was Kangxi, I think it was probably Chinlung, but it was a, a be beautifully done and um, a, a nice looking enamels. And for some reason, um, they they had it uh, uh, dated as Kangxi. I'm not sure why, but anyway, it's 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 you know 18th century Chinlung piece. Brought three hundred and eleven dollars, but nicely decorated, really nicely decorated, rich colors, gutsy big you know uh, uh, flowers on it, nice cobalt decoration. The cobalt was nice and even on it, and the colors were integrated perfectly on the overglaze part. Uh, you'll notice that there are little devices in the outer border, little floral elements were added to sort of elevate it uh, to a better variety. And uh, someone picked this up for $311. I still think platters are the biggest bargain around right now because you could, you're seeing these really well painted uh, 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 chin lung platters, big ones, you know, going for $300, $200, and I don't know why. I don't know why. It's a mystery to me. And uh, then on to this, I thought this was such a nice little silk with the boys and one of them riding a Kierden here and uh, the other one's got a, a banner, um, an umbrella up here and there's another one here with a banner and they're like having this little procession for themselves. And uh, nice looking scene, very charming. And uh, somebody bought this, I think on the reasonable side, $281. Well, they listed it as vintage for some reason. This is Ching. I, I, don't, I, I think they just maybe didn't understand it or something. Uh, but it, it uh, let's see here. They give the dimension 16 by 18. So it's about the size of a rank badge, roughly. Uh, but uh, a, a wonderful Ching example. Uh, late Ching, late 19th century. This is not. This was not vintage. This was Ching. And uh, um, I, th I think that was a very, very good buy. Uh, because the, the, the silk work on it is quite good. If you, if you take the time to examine these things, you'll see how finely sewn they are here, this rocky area, the finely drawn the flowers are, and all that. So there we go. All right, now on to, uh, oh, what's coming up? That's what it is. Um, there's, a, there's several good things coming up. This closes on Monday. Great big um, uh, Rose Mandarin charger. Uh, a nice old one, uh, mid-19th century. Uh, looks like it's in good shape. The, the, the enamels look like they're good. Uh, there's, a, there's a good bit of, you know, you know uh, an, an, uh, uh, what am I saying? The, there's no wear to the gilding on here. All right, if you look, check the rim, here it is. Uh, the gilding looks intact. Um, nothing to complain about. They've got a nice lemony yellow in there. And uh, what's it up to? It's up to f about $450. So it should do a bit more. Should bring five to 700 but uh, uh, a very attractive looking plate. And uh, what else here? Uh, oh, this, um, we had a couple of inquiries about this. So I'm gonna, I thought I'd talk about it a little bit. Um, these are one of those, those Buddhist plates, Bang Shek Xiang type of plates that they uh, did during the Guangxu period. And this one is curious because it has a Guangxu mark and then has China on it. Now, porcelain that was made for um, uh, export had to be marked China after or made in China after about 1895. That was sort of a, a law that was put in place. Um, Mark and period Guangxu pieces were never marked China uh, if they were made during the period because they weren't meant for export. The, these were clearly they were, these were court-ordered pieces. They weren't meant for export. So when you see this this kind of um, a, a plate with this export with this export mark on it, typically what it means is that this was made after the Guangxu period and the Republic period, but probably very early in it, judging by the appearance of the foot rim. And um, 
they would they would mark those because they were being made now for once the once the imperial family fell in, uh, at the end of the Guangxu, um, they they were the potters were still going to make um, some of their best pieces. And if you look at the the quality of the work on this, this thing is really well decorated, really well decorated. So I have a feeling this is right after the end of the period. And it, were it not for that China mark, you would think it was Guangxu mark and period. But because it has the Chinese ex, the China so, country origin mark in it on English, you could be pretty certain it was probably made during the early part of the early years of the Republic period where they were forced to add that uh, uh, because they were clearly going to export these. But beautiful quality. These were popular then. They're popular now. Um, it's just exceptional. Look at, look at this detail. Lots of good details in this plate. And uh, I think it's going to do fine, but just so have, sort of have a heads up on it. It's 14 inches. This is not a, a, a small plate. It's a charger, 14 inches in diameter. It's up to $350. Expect it to bring 1000 to 1400 But if it goes for less than that, it's, it's, it's a really good buy, uh, I think, uh, because this is beautifully done. The, the green is lovely. Uh, it's, just, it's just it was made, in my opinion, slightly after the period so it had to ha had to have the export stamp on it. That's all. But it's the same quality. So, and if it was Guangxu Imperial um, ware or court ordered ware, um, it would sell for two to three thousand. So uh, it, it may represent a good value to somebody. And then you have the slip decorated May Ping vase. This is coming up to close in a few days. It's up to five hundred ninety dollars, five hundred twenty dollars. Uh, expect it to double that toward the end, but uh, we'll see. We'll check back. And a Wu Shuang Pu hat stand. Uh, these things are always popular because of the, 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 the stories, uh, the, the, the history of these things, um, the identification of the, the images and the Tang poem and all that business. Um, and uh, you'll notice that on these, the, the quality tends to be quite good. And this one is really fine quality. Notice how well done the face is. Beautifully, beautifully detailed, subtle elegant um, and then you have these wonderful colors running all through it and uh, so forth but uh, a, a beautifully beautiful piece of porcelain and uh, no hole in the bottom so nobody ever made a, a, a lamp out of it which is good and it's got a couple of little chips around the rim nothing these are not uh, extreme at all um, a, a restorer uh, for uh, probably a hundred bucks could fill those in for you and um, here's some more of it and uh, where is it right now? Uh, it is up to $1,175 with uh, a day to go. It closes tomorrow. Expect it to bring um, $1,600 to $2,000 maybe. It could bring more. It uh, depends on if you, how serious the buyers are out there, of course. But uh, it should bring that. It should bring that. All right. And then over here to this. Now, this is a curious thing. This is a, a, a form of vase. Um, uh, that was done uh, in the imperial kiln in the Qinlung period. And this is a revival piece, okay, in my opinion. This is not Qinlung mark and period. It has a Qinlung mark on it, uh, but I, I, uh, uh, judging by the foot rim and other aspects of it, the characteristics of the glaze and so forth, uh, this little thick, too thick, glossy glaze, uh, not enormous amount of, well, it's got a lot of detail in it, but the details don't look quite right. Um, for Chin Lung, but certainly look good for Republic or Lei Qing. And I think that's when this was probably made, uh, 1900 to 1920. But just a, a really attractive example. And you got to keep in mind, there's the foot rim on it. That's sort of how the foot rims on those look when they did the re remakes of them in, about 100, 120 years ago. But you, you, you want to recognize that the, the, the market period example that were to come up for sale would uh, be, you know, in this six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand dollar range, up to a million, um, and maybe more. Um, I'm trying to think what the last one brought. Maybe one of you remember, but uh, this is a, I think, an awfully good looking base. When I first saw it, I thought it was a, re a complete fake, and uh, until I examined the, the examined it closely, and uh, the, the characteristics of the glaze and so forth, and uh, the way this mark is done and the way the foot rim is done and all of that, and it all adds up in my head to uh, 1900 to 1920. 
but beautiful beautiful vase and it's good size too it's uh uh how big is this thing it's like six, uh, 14 inches or something um 12 it's just a hair under 12 inches excuse me but it's not one of these little little you know short jars you know it's, it's six inches or something it's a foot tall but nice looking nice looking soft soft seafoam green celadon and uh it's almost blue it's got a lot of blue in it uh, i really liked it and uh I think this may go under the money. I'm not sure, but I have a feeling it will because so many people are going to look at it and just assume it's a brand new copy. It's not. And then this, these are back up again, and I don't know why. Um, uh, they sold uh, a couple of weeks ago for uh, uh, $3,300 or something. And uh, I looked up the marks on these because I wanted to be sure. And... Uh, these, we got the little J Gerald Davidson, Davison book here. And the mark says Hall of Brilliant Splendor. And uh, that was a mark that you saw on, on uh, t typically on late uh, uh, Qing examples, early Republic period examples. And th this is a wonderful looking pair of bowls. And uh, I don't know why the guy didn't pay for them. Because I didn't think... Um, uh, the, the price was unreasonable. Now, whether they were sold by J.T. Tai and company or not, I don't know if the, those stickers, if somebody added them or whatever, but it's certainly the kind of thing that J.T. Tai would have handled. Um, beautiful, uh, beautiful colors, beautiful decoration. Um, and these are not, these are not modern. These are old, um, uh, like I said, late Qing, early Republic, uh, but beautifully, beautifully done and uh, deep rich color and nowhere no damage that i'm aware of so uh, uh check those out they have them down as guangshu imperial coral red um bowls which they're not necessarily guangshu they could be early republic they could even be before the um guangshu period but uh they're very fine quality and if 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 they go for uh, very little money, um, blame yourself. <laughs> uh, leave a bit on these things. Leave a bit of a thousand dollars on them or two thousand dollars because there's no downside to it. And uh, then you have this um, this seller. Um, I don't know who he is. N M nine six nine six. He's got a bunch of really nice looking 18th century plates up. Very finely done. Um, they'll be in the newsletter pages because I just love them love them the way they're done uh, a, a beautiful uh, uh, flowers they look like they're all in good shape um nowhere to the gilding and so forth um perfectly good really good uh and they'll be in the newsletter page and there's some other stuff in there too as always but uh, uh those are what we're, we're seeing coming along we'll, we'll cover them and we'll report back on them see how they do and um that's it all right uh if you if you haven't subscribed yet please do um, here on YouTube, uh, we, 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 we want to get the, uh, as many of you um, watching as we can. And uh, if, you, if you have something that you want to tell us, leave us a comment. We read the comments. We don't always comment on the comments because, uh, I don't know, I just I, don't, I feel like I'm interloping. But um, um, for some reason, I don't know why. But um, I always read the comments, and, and, and many of you know that uh, when you've asked for things, we, we've tried to incorporate them. Somebody asked uh, why we stopped including the date in the, um, um, I think was, uh, a user, Charlotte, uh, asked that, uh, why we stopped using the dates on the, uh, each video each week, and it was just an oversight. <laughs> so, so we started adding them back in again, um, uh, and that kind of thing. So if there's anything you want to see, anything you want us to cover, let me know. All righty, uh, that's about it. Join us over on a bit amount also. Use the forum. Uh, the forums uh, had some interesting stuff on there lately. People post things there, trying to figure out what they are. And uh, the, the guys over there are great. And uh, we're always happy to, to help out. I've never had anyone say, gee, they're kind of mean on the forum because it's a public thing. And, you know, f how forums get, people can get pretty nasty. So uh, we, don't, we don't tolerate that. Uh, we want everybody to get along. All right, that's it. Have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy the spring weather. We will be. And uh, I'll see you all uh, next week. We're going to have a couple of videos coming up. And uh, if you're using the global pages, uh, subscribe to those. Uh, check them out uh, tomorrow morning uh, after about 10 o'clock. And those pages will all be updated with a lot of stuff in them, I'm sure. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.